welcome Danya Shinsky. Will you show us photos of the baby soon, please? Could we, could we, we, we all, we want, oh, they're all alone, okay. <clears throat> well, so, uh, so, so something strange happened at work the other day. I work at Baycrest uh, Center for Geriatric Care, and I'm a storyteller there, and I work in the palliative care unit. And I was walking by Milton's room. The family doesn't mind if I mention his name. They're kind of proud of this story. And he was dying at palliative care. And I had met him before. I knew the family. And uh, the really, he was a really nice guy. The day I met him, he was in his room, surrounded by all the women who loved him, uh, his wife, his sisters, his daughters. And the whole room was filled with, with women. And, and I met Milton, and he just looked around the room, and he said, I won the lottery. So he's a really, really a sweet guy. And, but now he was dying. And, and I just was passing by the room to pay my respects. And there was his wife and his daughter sitting there in the room. So I, 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 I just, on the spur of the moment, I said to his wife, did, did Milton have a favorite joke? So here now, Milton's in bed. He can't talk anymore. He actually died within two hours of this. And his wife says, yeah. And I said, would you tell it to me? So this is, this is Milton's favorite joke. The Pope was sick. By the way, Milton was Jewish. He was telling a Pope joke. So anyway, the Pope was sick, and the Pope called out from the balcony of the Vatican. He looked out at St. Peter's Square, and he said, my people, my people, my doctor has told me that I need a heart transplant, and without a new heart, I will die. I am your Pope, and I would like to ask one of you to donate your heart so that I may live. Thousands of people called out from St. Peter's Square, take my heart, take my heart. It's beautiful. They had bad Italian accents. <laughs> take my heart. And the Pope was on the balcony and looked out and said, yes, my people, it is what I expected of you, my, my faithful. Uh, but we will need a sign from God so I can decide whose, whose heart to accept. And just at that moment, a white dove was flying over St. Peter's Square. And from the wing of the dove, a, a little white feather began to float down over the crowd. And the Pope said, that is the sign from God I was, I was praying for. My people, whoever the feather lands on, that person will give me their heart. Thousands of voices continued to shout, take my heart. <laughs> so that was his joke, and I'm standing there, and I was wearing a parka. And just when his wife finished telling the joke, a little white feather came out of the parka and floated out across his, his deathbed. And his wife looked at it, and even under those circumstances, she laughed. And she said, just like Milton, he always liked to have the last word. <laughs> so the story I wanted to tell, though, that was just the beginning, because all those wonderful stories reminded me of that. Um, and by the way, best host ever, ladies and gentlemen. <laughs> best host ever. Best host ever. So, Marsh always likes to have a have a folk tale mixed in with with the uh, with the uh, with the true true story. So I'm, I'm going to tell you an old time story. So there's a man traveling down the road, and he didn't have a place to stay. And it was getting dark. It was what the French call l'heure entre chien et loup, which is the hour between the dog and the wolf. When things are, you can't quite tell what things really are. And he was walking down the road when he looked ahead and he saw a farmhouse. 
was that, then, then it looked like a castle. And then it looked just like a farmhouse. But anyway, it came up to the farmhouse. It was getting dark by now. And standing in front of the farmhouse was an old man chopping wood with an axe. And the traveler came right up to this old, old man. And he said, he said, good evening, father of the house. May I stay in your house tonight? I have nowhere to go. I'm, I'm a traveler on a dark and lonely road. And the old man leaned on the axe, and he said to the traveler, Oh, he said, Oh, I'm not the father of this house. You have to go inside the house and ask my father. He's by the fireplace. And so the traveler said, Thank you. He opened the door. He walked down a dark hall. And in the kitchen was a stone fireplace. And right in front of it was an old, old man sitting there trying to warm his hands, like old people do, trying to warm his hands by the fire, the, the embers of the fire. And the traveler came up to him and said, Good evening, father of the house. May I stay in your house tonight? And this old man looked up from the fire and he said, Oh, I'm not the father of this house. You have to ask my father. He's reading his book at the table. So by the table was a, was a, a really old man. So old he could barely turn the pages of the book. And the traveler came over and he helped him turn a page. The dust came from the book. And the traveler stood there and he said, Good evening, father of the house. May I stay in your house tonight? I have nowhere to go. The old man looked up. And his voice, as dry as the dust from the old, old book, he said, Oh, uh, I'm not the father of this house. You have to ask my father. He's on the couch. So on the couch was a man who was old. <laughs> and, and he was trying to smoke his pipe, but he couldn't even light his own pipe. The traveler came over, helped him light the pipe. The old man took a draw, blew out the smoke. And the traveler said, good evening, father of the house. May I stay in your house tonight? <laughs> oh. I'm not the father of this house. You have to ask my father. He's in his bed. So the traveler picked up a candle, and he walked through the kitchen. He came into a bed. The bedroom, it was, it was dark. He held up the candle, and in the bed was a man, and that man was very, very, very old. He was old. <laughs> Did I mention he was old? Just his eyes opened. They were blue eyes. This is a Norwegian fairy tale. And the traveler looked down, and he said to this old, old man, he said, Good evening, father of the house. May I stay in your house tonight? I have nowhere to go. I'm a traveler on a dark and lonely road. And the old man looked up, opened his lips, and he said, it took him a while to, because he was old. Oh, I'm not the father of this house. You have to ask my father. He's in his crib. Now, in the corner of the room was a crib, and in the crib was a man. And that man was so old that he had shriveled up to the size of a baby. The traveler held the candle up and looked down at this baby-sized old man, and he said, Good evening, father of the house. May I stay in your house tonight? A little voice came from the crib. Oh, I, I'm not the father of this house. You must ask my father. He's hanging on the wall. On the wall was a hunting horn. And in the open end of the hunting horn was a little white face as white as ash. The traveler walked towards the little 
ash white face in the horn on the wall. He came closer and closer. He was getting a little scared by now. <laughs> and he walked up and he stood close to the little face and he said, good evening, father of the house. May I stay in your house tonight? I have nowhere to go. I'm a traveler on a dark and a lonely road. And the little ash white face opened its little ash white lips and said, Okay, 